Pay close attention, verse 19. You too would do well to pay the closest attention to this prophetically inspired word, just as to a lamp shining in a dark place. 2 Peter 1.19 Life is busy. Life is complicated. Modern life in particular places all manner of demands on our time and energy. It is easy, far too easy, to make attention to the truth of the Word of God, Bible study and Bible reading, one's disposable priority. It is very easy to stop paying attention to the Word of God, even after being red-hot for the truth, gradually at first, but then slipping into a deceptively comfortable pattern of lukewarmness. Sooner or later, however, this sort of approach always catches up with us. Just like the military unit which got into the habit of failing to post guards, if we develop a lackadaisical attitude to the Bible and Bible study, we may find ourselves surprised by unforeseen events for which we are subsequently not prepared. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 26 and 1 Thessalonians 5 3. This is the fate likely to overtake most residents of Laodicea, who are ignoring the times through the false comfort of a non-existent pre-tribulation rapture. But even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, things that have to do with salvation, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 9. We are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness, 1 Thessalonians 5 5. So let us remain alert, 1 Thessalonians 5 6 through 11, not stumbling for lack of light, but rather sticking close to the light of the word, that is the lamp unto our feet, whereby we may persevere forward without danger of falling, no matter how dark this valley of death darkness we must pass through, to get to our promised reward may become, Psalm chapter 23 verse 4. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Psalm chapter 119, verse 105. Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. John chapter 12, verse 35 and 36. The Morning Star, verse 19. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises, that is, the living word Jesus Christ returns. 2 Peter 1, 19. Morning Star is a title for our Lord Jesus Christ, who, as the Father's replacement for the devil, who traded light for darkness, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, restores light to the world as the light of the world. John chapter 8 verse 12 and Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Just as the star that led the wise men to Bethlehem was a prophecy of Christ, Numbers chapter 24 verse 17, so we too are told to follow the only sure light in this world, the living Word of God, Jesus Christ, through His Bible, the written Word of God. I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify these things to you concerning the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. Revelation chapter 22 verse 16 The symbolism of this title is twofold. On the one hand, at his return, in the midst of a supernatural day which is neither light nor darkness, Zechariah 14, 6 and 7, our Lord Jesus Christ will blaze forth like the light of the brightest star, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 through 3 and Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, a true harbinger of the blessed morning to come after the long dark night of the tribulation. On the other hand, Jesus in his humanity also replaces the previous chief of the created world, Lucifer, meaning light-bearer, Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12, who was designed to reflect the light of God, but chose darkness instead, that is, to go his own way in rebelling against God, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Thus, as the harbinger of the dawn, the title Morning Star for our Lord focuses our attention on the blessed moment of Christ's return for us, the second advent when the darkness will finally give way for us forever to the light of Him who is the light. In Him was life, and this life was the light of men. And this light is shining in the darkness, and the darkness has not quenched it. John chapter 1 verse 4 and 5 I am the light of the world, 
He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John chapter 8 verse 12 I have come into the world as a light, in order that everyone who believes in me may not abide in darkness. John chapter 12 verse 46 Gone till that glorious day of the fulfillment of our blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 Until the dawning of that day of eternity, until the morning star rises, and we rise with him in resurrection. 1 Thessalonians 4 13 through 18 As long as we are in this dark world, the Bible, the truth of him who is the truth, must be the light which guides our path. Only by attention to the scriptures will we be sure of our steps and be able to keep from stumbling as we carry our crosses forward in emulation of him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John chapter 9 verse 4 and 5. No single verse, verse 20. Pondering in your hearts this principle of prime importance, no single verse of prophetically inspired scripture has ever come into being as a result of personal reflection. 2 Peter 1.20 Thinking about the truths we have learned and believed, pondering them in our hearts, is a fine way to occupy our minds and far superior to letting our thinking drift when we are not intensely concentrating on some necessary task, as our unoccupied minds have a tendency to wander under the influence of the sin nature into all manner of pointless and even sinful thinking. If we are not being good about policing our hearts, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 and Romans chapter 8 verse 5 through 9. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 Therefore, since you have been resurrected positionally with Christ, keep seeking after the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Keep thinking on the things above and not the things on the earth, Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 Even though he has already made it clear that the truth recorded in Scripture is not a mere human report and is superior even to what one may have seen and heard personally because it is inspired by the Holy Spirit, Peter feels the need to double down here on this principle and for good reason. The Bible is our one standard of faith and practice in this world. If we doubt it, if we allow our faith in the truth of it to be undermined by skeptics, of which the world is replete, goaded on by the devil and his forces, who, ironically enough, know very well that it is true, then this lack of faith, this doubt, will become a cancer which, while it may start small, will eventually eat away at all we know to be truth through faith. But the truth is that the Holy Spirit is the author of every verse of Scripture, so that, no single verse of prophetically inspired scripture has ever come into being as a result of personal reflection. But instead, every verse of the Bible comes from God. Amen. Which means, as we remember, I believe it. The direction and agency of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. For true prophecy has never occurred by human will, but only when holy men of God have spoken under the direction and agency of the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 1.21 Scripture is the very Word of God. Scripture comes from God. The Bible is a book entirely inspired by God, the very words of it containing the truth He alone meant for mankind to have in this world of evil. We only know about Jesus Christ through the Bible, and through the Bible we know, or can know, everything we need to know to negotiate this short life of carrying our crosses and following Him. Never did any human being decide to write a single verse of the Bible through his own initiative. That direction in every case, in every book, in every verse, came right from the Holy Spirit, and it was his direction, his guidance, that inspired the prophet to write and guided him as to what to write in a perfect way, not waiving the individual prophet's mentality or will or skill, but directing him in such a way that God's precise message was preserved for us, as it was decreed to be in eternity past. This is the book with which we have to do. This is the God with whom we have to do. Gracious, loving, kind, merciful, providing for our every need, the forgiveness of our sins through the blood of the Son of God, 
the empowerment of our lives through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the direction of our path through the truth of the very Word of God, until we rise to meet our Lord on that glorious day. I have given them your word, and the world hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. For they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. So make them holy that is sanctified, by means of your truth your word is truth. And just as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. I am consecrating myself for their sake, so that they too may be made holy, that is, be sanctified through truth. John chapter 17 verse 14 through 19.